Hello, children. This is a story of power and corruption. And like every great fable, there will be morals to the story, how good intentions go bad, how private industry seeks to cheat the government, and how lying and cheating will pay off in this world. <laughs> Let's just be honest. This is the story of the little defense contractor who could. So let's begin at the beginning. Atlantic Diving Supply was a tiny mom and pop shop out of Virginia Beach just getting by when they discovered something amazing. They could win government funds through military equipment contracts. See, the government each year has certain contracts earmarked for companies below a certain size so that big defense contractors can't outbid and bully everyone. And it's a way to keep the playing field fair. Now Atlantic Diving Supply, who we'll be referring to sometimes as ADS figured, why not try their hand at bidding for some of these? And so they did and they won. And little by little, ADS took on more and more of these contracts to supply things like boots and various equipment to the government. Slowly, they grew from a five person company into over 300 people. And not only that, their revenues started ballooning as well. It wasn't before long, their revenues exceeded over a billion dollars, which is really incredible coming from such humble beginnings of a small dive shop. And really it's the American dream, right? And soon big defense contractors were waiting for Atlantic Diving Supply to join the big leagues. It was time for ADS to grow up. But here's the thing, Atlantic Diving Supply, they didn't want to grow. They didn't want to compete in the big leagues. They were hooked on small business contracts. Getting them is so much easier and their revenue streams were hugely reliant on that sweet, sweet government cash. So they had a problem. How do you continue growing a business and make more and more money without hiring more people and becoming classified as a big business. See, the regulation on what makes a big business versus a small business is fundamentally regulated by the Small Business Association. And generally, the guideline worth looking at is 500 people or fewer is considered to be a small business. So as long as Atlantic Diving Supply could keep their employees below 500, they could continue getting defense contracts for small businesses. And that's exactly what they did. This is ADS. ADS fulfills a mission here at home too. We contribute to the regional economy by providing good jobs to 400 people, to 400 people, to 400 people. But to those paying attention, things looked strange. Even as their hiring slowed, their revenues kept increasing from $1 billion to, in 2019, they hit a record-breaking $3.2 billion in government contracts, according to POGO. So how are they doing this? Well, no one knew until someone blew the whistle. See, someone came out and said that this little mom and pop shop that everyone thought of as cute, and small, they were up to something dirty. They had a network of small companies they weren't reporting because they knew if they did, they'd be considered a large business. A network that allegedly included over 900 people basically working on behalf of ADS and that weren't reported. This network would win contracts for ADS, but they wasn't disclosed. And if you can't already tell, saying you're a small business while actually being a large business with shell companies to win easy government contracts away from small businesses is actually super illegal. A network of companies like SEK Solutions bid for small contracts. In the case of SEK Solutions, since they were a woman-owned company, they bid for defense contracts earmarked for women, which they would then give over and work with ADS to fulfill. Now, of course, you can't do this, but it was never disclosed. And this is only the start of the corruption. Not only did SEK Solutions work with ADS, they also weren't actually owned and operated by a woman. I mean, it was technically in name only, the owner was a woman, but she was a figurehead. Her husband, Khalil, actually hatched this plan years before in order to win government contracts. He had her sign saying that she was the owner and making all the decisions, when in fact, she was not. She was just a puppet to win easy government contracts. But SEK Solutions isn't the only one. Another small business, Carta, was also set up and working with ADS to get minority-owned government contracts. This conspiracy was then aided and abetted by local politician Ron Villanueva, who helped these two shell companies get these contracts at the political level. Eventually, they were sued under the False Claims Act and Ron Villanueva was criminally charged. Ron Villanueva will spend the next two and a half years of his life behind bars. Villanueva participated in a nine-year conspiracy involving more than $80 million in fraudulently obtained government contracts. Here I am. I am been held accountable for these things and look forward to 
doing my time and... But what happened to our little mom and pop shop, ADS? Did, did they get shut down? Did, did they lose their almost laughable small business status? Well, no. After years of litigation, they admitted no guilt. They instead paid $20 million to make the case go away in a settlement. And if you aren't familiar, when you settle, you don't admit guilt. It doesn't mean you didn't do it. And especially when you're paying $20 million, we can infer <laughs> why you would pay that kind of money to make a case go away. But they admitted no guilt. And the prosecution, of course, they heralded this as a big win for the little guy. A big score in the name of fairness and justice. The Justice Department remarked in a press release last year that the settlements rank as the largest False Claims Act recovery based on allegations of small business contracting fraud. But others are less optimistic. See, the problem is $20 million to a company with $3.2 billion in government contracts is really just a drop in the bucket. And since Atlantic Diving Supply admitted no guilt, our not so little, little defense contractor is still technically considered a small business according to the Small Business Association, which means they're still winning contracts away from actual small businesses. And this is despite the fact that the Small Business Administration themselves, their inspector general in 2017 said, the action of ADS and its affiliated entities deprived legitimate small businesses of valuable federal contracting opportunities. Exactly. And at this point, it seems like ADS has so much money from these lucrative government contracts that they can basically buy their small business status forever. Because no matter how much trouble they get in, no matter how much evidence the opposing side has, they can simply pay their way out in a settlement. And the unfairness of this tactic of pretending to be a small business while actually using the muscle of a billion dollar large company is so hilariously against the original intentions of a small business contract that let me remind you were foundational for letting ADS grow in the first place. It's really hard to express the irony here, but I'll try. It's like a high school basketball league, which has age limits, obviously to keep things fair, but there's a player who refuses to get off the court even after they turn 18. And every year, while the other kids stay the same size, <laughs> This player gets faster and stronger and better until they're basically just dunking on little children. It sounds pretty ridiculous, right? But that's basically what's going on here. Remember what the inspector general said, the actions of ADS and its affiliated entities deprived legitimate small businesses of valuable federal contracting opportunities. Oh, and by the way, just to throw a little salt in the wound, remember the PPP program the government just rolled out for small businesses, you know, COVID relief loans for, for these small businesses who need help. You know, you're just little, your little restaurant, right? Yeah, our little defense contractor with $3.2 billion in federal contracts, they just got a two to $5 million loan. Let me, let me repeat that. While hardworking Americans are struggling to get loans for their own small businesses, a $3.2 billion revenue defense contractor is once again posturing as a small business needing help. So to conclude, what have we learned today? Well, we've learned that cheating the system can often be a very, very lucrative thing. In addition, if it's lucrative enough, you can pay your way out of getting in trouble when you finally get found out. See, that's what people don't tell you. They say eventually you'll get caught, but they don't tell you that if you're big enough, you can buy your way out of it. And that concludes the story of the little defense contractor who could. Thanks for listening, guys. I hope you sleep well tonight. See you next time. Steven, 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 what am I to do with you? I hear you're a little bit down. I understand. Pandemic, everything going on. But here's the thing, Steven. I'm going to like and subscribe because you're a cool guy and you're on the ball and you're going to make this happen. Everybody loves you. So just have faith, stick with it, as I said. I'll be watching. 